Peace and blessings guys, this is Takia, AKA Black Butterfly, and this is part three of my houseplant tour for the fall. Now, if you do remember, if you're not a new subscriber, then you probably would have seen my summer um, indoor houseplant tour, and if not, then I will put the description or the, of the link in the top right hand corner. So you could just click on that if you would like to see what the houseplants look like before this three month checkup. So now that we are in fall, I wanted to give another checkup and I'll do another checkup for the winter and then spring and then start the cycle all over again. So I love to keep these kind of plant diaries because it allows me to be able to see um, how I've been nurturing my plants and just reaffirming my green thumb and I'm actually really proud of myself. So what I'm going to do is, since you guys have seen my, um, I've already seen my plant tour, I'm not going to list each individual name. I'm just going to go through the ones that have been doing very well and maybe any that have not or just anything that I had new. Maybe I'll put those um, names up. But guys, if you had any questions in regards to any of the plants that I'm going to show you in each room, just leave a link um, of the time on the um, video so that I can know which plant you're talking about. Um, so for example, if it's at four minutes and you're trying to figure out what the plan is at four minutes into the video, just let me know the time. And that actually has helped me a lot when I've had people um, asking for identification of plants and so forth. All right, guys. So here I have, um, I don't know if you saw this one from the last video. This is um, new since the um, August plant tour and this is one of my Chinese evergreens that I just repotted uh, this is a very low light tolerant plant and so it doesn't um, need very very direct um, sunlight but I am providing extra light here um, so it's doing well this philodendron um, it has grown so long now that I actually had to I don't want to pull it out that I actually had to wrap it around now and I don't even know if you remember it from the last time it didn't even have half of this growth and this is in three months so it's doing well so this is that um, heart leaf uh, philodendron Okay, this one is doing cool this is that uh, Rojo Congo philodendron and this is also the one that had the case of the spider mites and is recovering so now i'm starting to get some new growth in here and here um, but it's a very slow grower a very slow grower my two anthuriums here and here uh the pink anthurium and the red anthurium so the flowers i cut off the stalk and so now it can just focus on uh, focus on um, foliage growth and this big baby, I really guys want you to see the last video so you can see how small this was. This is my colocasia. Look how beautiful. Look at my hand compared to it. Beautiful leaves, beautiful. This is my colocasia and it's just popping out baby after baby after baby. So this one just came out this week. Uh, the elephant ear is doing well. It's actually just maintaining itself. This new growth here has been stunted right here. If you go look in there, that new growth has been sitting there for months. It has not popped out. So it's not dying. The plant is not dead, but it's not doing anything. So I'm really not sure what's going on with it. It's in a big enough pot. Here is my pride and joy, my peperomia that is doing amazing. Look at all of the new babies. So again, if you look at the old video, then you will see how um, small this one started out as. Uh oh, what was that? Oh, then that was the tag. That was not a leaf. <laughs> that was the tag off the plant. Yeah, so this is my peperomia. Beautiful. Ponytail palm, not doing much of anything. I moved here my dumb cane it was in the dining room um, before I just moved it here in the corner this is another low um, light tolerant plant so that's why I have it in the corner my Fatonia aka Juanita I love this plant because it's named after my grandmother um, very low light tolerant plant as well and it's doing okay it's not doing much of anything uh, my bonsai is let me focus my bonsai is not doing well 
but it's not dying. So maybe I need to prune it some more and give it some more light, but I'm very uh, amateur when it comes to bonsai. Uh, the jade, hardly any growth, but I think it's not getting enough light. So right here, this is the section that I have in my um, living room. Now I did move um, a lot of plants. Uh, the one that you remember that was in the um, middle here, where I'm pointing to, it was a big elephant ear plant and um, that actually had a really bad case of aphids. And they, the, oh God, it was horrible, the infestation. So I had to get rid of it. And that was a very expensive plant. Also, if you also remember, I had the Mexican palm. The Mexican palm died as well. That was a $79.99 plant, <laughs> $79. But the Mexican palm uh, died as well as the elephant ear that was here. So this is what I have left in the living room. So I had two casualties. And that truly, um, to be fair, is because I did not have enough light for it. So this is the living room. Right now, I'm just preparing for the holidays. So just doing a little cleaning. I have a ZZ plant over here. Now I'm in my dining room. And as you see, I also moved my umbrella tree, my Shiflera. I moved this one. It used to be over in the corner over here. And then now I moved it over here so that it can have its own space. Okay and I have a little spotlight on it just for it. I have here, uh, my ZZ plant is doing okay. Again, a low uh, tolerant uh, plant, so you can actually leave that one alone. It doesn't bother anybody. <laughs> okay, so that is over here. Over here on my dining room table, I have my mother-in-law's tongue, so my Sansevieria. And over here, I um, have my rubber tree plant and I just have those sitting on the table so this is my little arrangement for the holidays I love that if we come in the corner uh, this is new to you guys so you guys haven't seen this one from the last video um, I do have my monstera you guys saw that one the monstera did have a case of um, mealybugs and I treated it uh, with um, the alcohol and water and it's doing nicely now. It's growing so nicely. Before, on the last video, you guys never saw the split leaf. And now you see that now a lot of them are growing in with the split leaves. So that's the Monstera. And back here, I would like to proudly introduce you uh, to my Ficus Lorata, who is now recovering from that last video. Please go back and look at it. It was on his last leg and I was screaming out for help from everyone on what to do or what was going on with it and why I wasn't properly growing. Um, I did have a problem with why they were growing in with the brown spots. I did hear someone say because my pot was too big and that they like to be tight or um, stress or who knows, I don't, I don't know, but now it's growing. But what's happening is that it'll grow in brown, those specks, but then when they do, mature they look like this so I don't know maybe this is what they're supposed to look like but as you see all of these leaves all of these this whole section here is all from three months so when I was stressed out about them dying it actually recovered doing well I have a dumb cane another different bakia back here in the corner is doing okay these are two new babies, so you guys haven't seen these, and I got these from the flea market and um, for $2, and they're both um, called Oxalis, O-X-A-L-I-S. I'll put the, the name on there. It's called Oxalis, and I love them because it's like little, the shamrock plant. I call them the butterfly leaves, but they're more like the shamrock. So I did get the green version and the purple one, Oxalis. Here are my orchids, but I did give you um, a video on my orchids when I repotted them um, before. So if you wanna see the video on that, you can. But those are my orchids. They're doing okay. 
you guys saw my succulent so i'm not going to show you um individually what my succulents look like but i will show you the two new babies that i bought since the new video so i do have um finally got my aeonium so finally got my aeoniums that i wanted um i don't know if this is the zwartkopf type uh but i love this one okay and i have this crested cactus and i love this one because if you look here it's it's crested it's under one stem i can't really show you because the way that it is made let me see let's see if you can see the stem like that you see how it looks under there it's on the one wide stem it's a, called a crested um succulent so those are the two um new ones that i did get and look at my blooms on my thanksgiving cactus blooms on it so pretty okay all right so and guys you already saw all of my succulents there's no need to look at those anymore um so let's go over to the corner the other side look at my cylindrical sansevieria this one loves popping out new babies look at this one this one is already forming and see as you get layer upon layer that comes on top of the main one then there's another layer that will go over and cover it until they get thick like these so i have a couple of babies growing and go there see all of those very nice um here's my zebra plant it's doing well um i have getting a lot of new growth um, it's very demanding for water so it's droop it droops like every three four days so it's very demanding uh here is my um beautiful bromeliad that i love my bromeliad neurologilia and look how big it's getting in the purple this has been like so beautiful and giving me color uh, let me see here's another one of um the zebra plants there we go so it's doing all right i thought it was going to die a long time ago but i found out how to take care of it never let it dry out and that's why you have the brown crispy leaves because if you allow it to continuously dry out um over and over and over again um then it will cause the tips of the leaves to become brown here's my yucca okay it's growing my um, croton and remember when I told you that crotons were uh, one of my favorite plants and so there's my croton that has all those new growths in there and you know that they're new growths because they don't have the um, color here with the red in there so if you see all green those are indicative of just showing that they're a new growth or they just weren't getting enough light but in my case those are all new leaves here same thing new leaves in the middle the croton this croton is getting so big over here. One of my favorite one, that's the gold dust. It also had a case of um, spider mites and I got rid of that very quickly. So you have to check on your plants daily. Um, back here, you guys, <clears throat> excuse me, my palm. Okay, uh, that one is my sago. That one is doing nicely. You see the new growths. I had to cut the tips of them off because they were too, too tall. So I wanted to kind of make it a little proportionate to um, the bottom leaves. So that one has been growing nicely here. How can I miss this one? Uh, the peace lily. This peace lily um, has been providing me with flowers for months and months and months. So this one is doing very well. And again, from the last video, you know when to water a peace lily when it droops. And because I have it in a terracotta pot, just be mindful that terracotta pots absorb your water more. So you would find yourself watering uh, your plants that are in the terracotta pots more frequently than ones that are in the ceramic and glass containers and plastic and so forth. So with my peace lily, I have to water her maybe every three, four days. Uh, here, my purple passion is doing beautifully. This is my first time being able to successfully, excuse me, successfully grow a purple passion. Look how beautiful, let me get this in focus so you can see how beautiful the leaves are. And these are new ones. 
and you know that they're new because it has the green on it and not yet the purple. So when they start to become a little bit more mature, then they'll grow them with more purple. Look at the velvet on that. Beautiful, gorgeous. All right, here's my alocasia. There we go. The alocasia, which is the African mask. This was the baby. And the baby is now growing up. It actually had one new growth. And so it's doing well. Here's my mini Shaflera that's growing well. I actually want to kind of bonsai this and make it look a little different. So I don't like the way that it's growing in. See how it's growing in sideways? I don't like the way that it's growing in. So I'm going to do something with that one. Up here, I move the Bella Palm. The, this is the Neantha Bella Palm. And when I moved it closer to the light, look how tall it's getting now. Okay, it's got has a lot of new growth. It's doing very well there. My spider plant I actually had to move, and from the last video, it was down on this level, but then now it started to grow. This is the plant that I complained that was never growing. And now look at the growth. So happy. And the spider plant. My um, golden um, pothos plant is doing well. Nice and lush leaves. I also have my Hoya, which is doing well. I always love this little one that looks like someone chewed a plant, chewed off of the leaf, but that's how it grew in. But this is a very slow growing vine, but it is so thick and healthy. Okay, this is my Song of India plant. Down there is, let me get down here closer if I can. All right, this is the Calathea. The Calathea was giving me problems um, and luckily I was able to save whatever I had left and I had to cut off the edges around it. This plant requires a lot of humidity, um, but it can't stand in wet water. And what happened was it was staying too wet and it started to get fungus in the bottom. It started to get rotten and I was able to pull it out of the dirt, pull all the dirt out, let it dry out first and then repot it. And then I just cut off the edges that were really crinkly brown let the soil dry out a little bit and then I started to water it again and so now it's perking up and before I thought I was going to die and I love Calatheus. Um, down here um, is a snake plant so another Sansevieria but just a different um, variegated version and if we come down here I have my Drexina but this is the spiked version so this is also a Drexina. Right. So this is my little section here. Hey, okay, which I love. I find myself um, watering my plants maybe once every two weeks. Sometimes it gets stretched to once every three weeks. It just depends. Um, so lady, the ones that are in here in the corner and there are a lot of them are in the glass and plastic pots, they take a longer time to dry out. And so I really do not have to water them um, as often and as you see they're flourishing so as you see in three months I can probably count I would hope I wouldn't say on one hand okay maybe on two hands <laughs> um, three um, and within three months how many times I've actually watered these plants and it hasn't been often and again you feel it with your finger um, you stick your finger down in the soil and if it comes up dry then you water but if not then you um, if it's still wet, then you leave it alone. And that's what I do. So I always err on the side of caution by um, underwatering as opposed to overwatering because that was what I was having a problem with for a, a very long time. I also forgot to um, mention this plant. How did I forget this one? This one is the Draxina fragrance. And from the last video, you would know that this plant is called what? Yeah, I know. It is called Grandma because this was my plant that when my grandmother passed away in 2007 this was the plant that was at the funeral and i um wound up taking the plant taking it home and how many years later almost 11 years later um actually it was tall so it was almost to the ceiling i ch um, chopped it off and this is now the new growth so actually what's weird is that it's not getting tall at all so as you see where i chopped it off but it won't the stem won't grow so I'm getting a lot of new leaves, but I'm getting no stem growth. So it's not getting taller, it's just staying short. So I don't even know how I even forgot that one. So I just, guys, I want you to just see 
one last time in my living room this is my area here my nice little sanctuary my little relaxing space so I have many different areas of the house where I can come and relax and have some peace of mind and a tropical feeling. So whether or not if I'm in the living room or the dining room, it doesn't matter. So just pick a spot and cop a squat and you'll still be in nature. So now that was the living room and dining room. So now I'm going to take you into the kitchen. Hey guys, so now I'm in the kitchen. I'm in my kitchen area. And from the last video, you did not see a couple of things. So number one, these track lights up at the top were not there. And I didn't have as many plants. So if you look, go back and look at the other video and then you'll see how they started out. I'll probably maybe, maybe have six plants and then now I have many and actually my food is supposed to be up there but I had to move my food somewhere else to accommodate my plants <laughs> anyway all right so I did buy another ficus lorata I love these fiddle leaf fig and I, I love them so much I had to get another one so this is my second one um, I just repotted I need to put some rocks down in there and so I'm kind of getting the hang of the growth and what to do um, also with these things you have to make sure that you keep these um, wiped off because they get so freaking dusty all right um, here is another let me get that okay one of my variegated um, pothos um, this one is the marble queen so this one has some good new growth in there I'm trying to get the lighting good there we go Golden pothos, and that's a slow grower. Here is my goldfish plant. The goldfish plant still has not provided me with any, any flowers, but I'm getting a lot of foliage growth, and so that's a good thing. So when the spring comes, then I'm hoping to get some nice, big goldfish looking flowers. Here is my wandering Jew plant. And again, from the last video, these are ones, I'm trying to get the good lighting. These are the ones that had to be propagated. Um, I had four little propagate, um, four little um, stems in there. And look how long now it has grown. So again, look at the other video and I'll put the, the link on the top right hand corner just to see how they started out as. Amazing. Here, um, another one of my gold dust croton. I need some water, as a matter of fact. So I'm about to give that one a drink. Uh, let me see, here is my hanging jade. That's doing well. Actually, it was doing so well that I had to turn it around because this one, this side actually was facing the window. And you see, when it was facing the window, it had all the new growth and then this side was all stifled. So I turned it around, and then now as you see, they're hanging out from this way. So that's the reason why I did that. So that one's doing well. This spider is also doing very nicely. Those were the two babies that I talked about that I also um, got off of a, a mother plant, and now the babies are looking like adults themselves. My uh, African violet, finally is letting me know that I'm doing something right because look at the little babies and the new growth in there. I'm so happy. I've been watering this one from the bottom, never water from the top. I've been watering it from the bottom and keeping some nice sunlight on there or bright light. Oh, sorry. And now it's rewarding me. So this is one of the ones that I kind of got frustrated with because with African violets, it can be a little finicky. Um, my what is this one? My ponytail palm. My ponytail palm that I got from the flea market, my $2 plant, that one is so cute and is doing so well. I'm actually probably gonna chop some of this off um, because it's so long. Uh, let me see. 
here is, what's this one? My Pachira. There we go. Can you see it? Here's my Pachira that I need to uh, fix up a little bit. I need to bonsai that up a little better um, than that. Guys, I'm sorry about the lighting in here is that it just keeps trying to compensate for the light behind um, the plants and so it's very dark. Uh, down in here, um, look at my aloe. This is the aloe vera. This is the medicinal aloe vera. Look how tall it is. It's so tall that now I need to move this. And I hardly will even water this because this is, um, the aloe vera does not demand a lot of water. It doesn't even like to be um, watered that much. But look how big it is. Beautiful. So I always keep it in the kitchen um, just in case you get a burn or something like that, which mainly happens in my kitchen. Then I can just chop off one of these, open it up, and then use the gel um, to help alleviate the pain uh, from the burns, help heal it. Uh, here is my rabbit's foot fern, and that one is doing so nicely. Look at this. Now this is also that, um, that I got from the flea market, the $2 one. And look at the roots. So these are all, because they're all light, these are all new roots. Let me see if I can get it to focus. There you go. And you see you have new babies trying to come out. Look how they're just, that is beautiful. I love these. Focus. Look at that. They're getting so big. And I like that. And so this one is supposed to be a hanging plant. This is to help um, catch the gnats. So these are for the fungus gnats. So I apologize that that's there. Um, but again, all of these light colored roots, um, those are all gonna hang out. I'm trying to get this to focus. There you go. They're all gonna hang. Um, and so this is that's why this would be a perfect hanging plant because once these roots um, start to stick out and hang over, then you're gonna get these fawns that are gonna start coming out and they're gonna start hanging over. And so I think this is gonna be a beautiful hanging plant. And then what's in here is um, a spider, and I should just take these out because the spider is doing so nicely, but that's not part of the fern. So just so you think that those are two different plants in there, and the spider actually is having babies. And I need to maybe take those off and propagate those, because these are the um, green, all green uh, spider. Um, I have the jade back here um, doing nicely um, this one I forgot the name of this one this one is also from the flea market and it was two dollars and I think this is uh, one of those plants that flower in the spring and summer so if you remember what the name of that one is uh, let me know okay and um, this arrowhead plant is doing nicely like I checked this one often because I was told that this one is um, this plant is uh, spider mite central so I need to be careful uh, with spider mites so I check this one often but it's getting nice and full in there so right now this is my setup I have the three track lights there I have um, light here right there okay and those are the compact fluorescent um, bulbs, the high uh, full spectrum bulbs. Um, here are, what's this one? That same one. Um, those, these are the LED um, lights, LED daylight. Okay. And again, I have one here um, specifically for the ficus. And so I make sure that I, I have more than enough lighting. Um, although this is a window that is facing south, there is a big um, building next to me. So it is not allowing for the full light to come in, right? Because the south facing window is the ideal, but it's still not bright enough. So I have to supplement. So again, this is what I have going on in the kitchen. So I hope you like this little setup, I do. So now when I'm cooking and so forth, then I have some peace and I have tranquility and I have a tropical oasis in here as well. So now let's go to the bedroom. Hey guys, so now we're in my bedroom and from the last video, you guys remember that I had this 
um, like ladder type shelving system um, where I was able to showcase a lot of plants in this area right in front of my window. Now this is north facing window. This is not ideal. Um, the light level is horrible. And so I had to supplement, although it looks weird, I had to do it. So I had to buy uh, one of these stands, um, light stands. I had the three, but I had to point it towards it. So it looks like it's in the way because my bed is here, um, but I had to do it. And it's actually not something that's really in the way. Um, so I'm okay with that. So these are the, the lights. These are actually the LED. So you can just go to the store and buy any regular LED light, just as long as the lumens and the Kelvins are high. You want at least 5,000 K for your Kelvin. Um, so here I'm having um, some good progress with all of these plants. So there's um, really nothing bad to say about any of them. I have the orchids up here doing well. I moved the bamboo here um, because they weren't getting any light and I wasn't going to put a spotlight on the other side of the room just for the bamboo. So I just have them sitting there with um, the orchids. I have the crib of Moses that is doing beautifully. It is so tall now that it is sticking from here. So I have to like pull it, actually it's stuck. I have to pull it um, away so that it can hang off a little bit. So I may have to move that soon. And then here is another anthurium that was actually kind of sick. It wasn't doing well and I'm nursing it back and actually I'm getting some good um, leaf growth. So I'm not gonna give up on this anthurium. This one is a pink anthurium. Um, here is, um, uh, my purple what purple heart purple heart plant and all this new growth this was not there and I also have another baby there we go so that there's a baby that's down in there I'm getting some good growth here so that's the purple heart uh, you have see my two bromeliads on the side the leaf, the um, flower is now starting um, to wither away and finally, because this flower has been um, there for months, for months, um, I, it's, I don't know, the beginning of summer. So that's doing well. Um, this one is another pride, okay, my uh, prayer plant. This prayer plant is doing so nicely. Um, it has bloomed for me, provided me with flowers uh, almost every day which I had never seen before. I'm getting so much new growth. As a matter of fact, here's the remnants of a flower that maybe is about to come out. There we go. So getting a lot of um, new growth. Look at all these that are ready to unroll and come out. So this is also um, a possibility for a hanging plant too, because it's going to fall over. So it's doing beautifully. Um, here, Is that, uh, what is this one called? This one is the false Aurelia galaxy palm tree. And that one is doing beautiful. Look how um, beautiful, there we go. Look how beautiful and shiny the leaves are. Very healthy plant. This purple passion. Um, I'm trying to figure out which plant is healthier, but I think this purple passion is a lot better than the other one that I have in the dining room. This one is gorgeous. Look at the purple, all velvety, just very nice and healthy. Um, over here is my Florida Beauty. Okay, um, this one dried out too much and, and now I found out that this plant doesn't like to dry out. So I have to keep this um, moist. And um, so I'm lucky I did not lose all the leaves, but here, I probably have one that's, there you go. So I lost a lot of leaves under there, but I'm gonna have um, some new growth. Now here's another um, bromeliad, and here's the baby. So from the last video, you saw that there was a very small baby, okay, from the mother plant, because the mother plant already flowered, and so it's not gonna flower again. And so now here is the baby. Okay, there we go. So now what I can do is I can take this out of the pot and I can repot the baby one because the mother is gonna just grow fully and she's not gonna grow another flower. So, um, or I can just leave it there. I actually kind of like the way that it looks there. Um, here's my purple waffle. This one is so demanding with water. Um, 
and I have to water this like every few days very demanding and as you see it's about to start drooping again and it just falls right over and then when you give it water it'll spruce right back up that's the purple waffle this one was a tropical plant that I was never able to ID um, no one was able to help me with that one I have no idea what that is looks like citrus plant leaves or something like that I wouldn't be surprised if that grew a fruit but I have no idea what that is um, down here I have another uh, peace lily um, that an old boss of mine um, gave me and it was about to die and almost threw it out and it started to sprout so I actually saved it and just let it do its thing and so now it's regrowing and doing well there all right and then here I have my velvet um, pothos Sat the satin, not the velvet, the other, the other material is silver pothos, <laughs> but it feels very velvety. Okay. And over here is my lipstick plant. My um, it's called Asky, what is it called? Asky Nanthus. Let me try to get the lighting. There you go. It's called Asky Nanthus. So it's called the lipstick plant. And you guys saw this from the last video where um. I told you this is a vine that when it does flower, the flowers are gonna look like um, lipsticks. So I moved this one. This one's originally was in the living room and I moved it into my bedroom. And then down here is my majesty palm. Um, and it is not doing well at all. So I don't know, I did get a lot of reviews of, from people talking about the majesty palm and how this was not one of the best palms to get because um, I don't know, it just doesn't do well. I have no idea, I don't know if it's because it's by the window, maybe there's a draft. I don't know if it's because now I put the heat on and the heat is bothering it, I'm watering it. These two, like I told you, I had these new growths when I first got the plant, they never opened. So, I don't know. So this one I'm going to um, be getting rid of um, shortly because it's right in the middle of my window. When I wake up, I don't wanna see, so, you know, something looking like that okay all right so that is my area with my plants okay so now you've seen the living room the dining room the kitchen the bedroom and remember last time, I, I, the last thing that I showed you was my front porch. But if you've been following up with my videos, you would see that now my front porch has been taken over by my uh, cacti collection. So I do have a few that are sticking around, um, like my Thanksgiving cactus, which is not doing too well. Um, the Schaeffler, which I may bring in um, because I really love this one and I'm having some really good new growth here with that Schaeffler and I don't want the frost um, to kill it. Um, here is another one of my um, Sago um, palms that recovered and is doing beautifully. And again, I don't know if it's hardy and if it can stay out here in this um, enclosed porch, but if I do see any signs of uh, distress from it being too cold and I will move it. Okay, all the rest here are cactus, okay. Um, here is another elephant um, ear plant, one of my big ones. Yeah. So this one again is staying out here until I see any signs of distress because I don't have any other place to put them. All right, there's my cane plant I put out here um, to recover as it wasn't doing too well, and I really wasn't treating it right anyway. As you see, it needs some water. Um, here's my Tropicana uh, canna plant, which is doing okay. And it usually would have been really, really tall, but that one had a problem. So it's sitting out there. And then over here is the Birds of Paradise. And this was a Birds of Paradise that was um, not doing well at all. Um, so I was going to throw it away and it started to provide more new growth and I'm just going to give it an opportunity and see as you see here there's a nice one coming up right now okay so I'm just going to leave that alone as long as I'm ignoring it then it's actually growing 
right. here I had a problem this one is my pitcher plant and the pitcher plant um, I know needs to keep a lot of humidity um, they say it's kind of hard to kill I'm hoping that's what it is I do have some new growth in there I'm trying to keep it um, with moisture I know that this one has to have um, new humidity so maybe I need to cover it and provide it with some humidity or something like that all right um, and guys if you remember um, that I was growing uh, tomatoes and growing um, green peppers and so forth um, and I had a lot of those up here. If you look at the last video, I had a lot of straw, uh, strawberry plants, green peppers, tomatoes, and remember I was a first time grower. And what I do have left, I do have my Meyer lemon tree, and it was from the last video, uh, very short. Um, when I got this from uh, my local nursery, it was just this short. And this is in spring and so this is all the new growth that I have now so it's doing nicely now I just don't know what I need to do with it uh, for the winter and how much cold it can actually take um, being here on this porch um, but this is the Meyer lemon tree this is the first year so I did not expect to get any fruit um, I'm focusing more on my foliage and for the spring I will repot it in a much bigger um, container so again um, ta-da guess what I got out of all of those plants there you go one little nice little tomato <laughs> so I grew five tomato trees and I got one tomato. <laughs> I love this tomato. I am gonna slice this up and I'm gonna make a sandwich with it. I'm gonna love that tomato to death because I grew that tomato and although it took five trees to grow one tomato, I'm proud of it. And my pepper tree, it actually gave me one pepper. So I grew four pepper trees and it gave me one pepper and I ate that pepper. And I'm okay with that. So guys, you can have fun with your gardening, have fun with your planting because it eases your anxiety, any stress levels, any thoughts of depression. You come and tend to your plants, you're not thinking of those things. You're just thinking of those plants and the beauty of them, you're admiring them, you're nurturing them, you're taking care of something. Say hi to my bike. And I love it, I love it. So this is my area now and when the spring time come, I will be bringing my uh, echeverias out here and um, and so forth. So I'll be bringing a lot of more plants out here in the spring. Um, what I did buy was a thermometer and um, for the temperature, uh, temperature gauge so that I can see how um, cold it does get in here. So right now it's at uh, 56 degrees, I have to go up to 58 degrees. And that's cool for, um, for my cactus um, plants because they can go down to at least 35. So right now it is cold outside. So we're gonna be around 50 degrees outside, but it's keeping up to around 56, 58. So it's doing well. So this is my enclosed porch area. And this is what I have left. Okay. So as always guys, I always appreciate you coming to visit. I really appreciate all of the views that I've received from my first house plant tour. And you guys gave me the inspiration to want to continue doing more. So please, I hope you are liking my videos. Please comment, please continue to give me the constructive criticism. Please continue correcting me when I get my plants wrong. I do appreciate that. I do appreciate your support and all of the love. And I hope you continue to visit. So until next time, I do wish you nothing but peace and blessings. And I just hope and praying that your plants provide you with, with as much peace and tranquility and less anxiety and less stress. And I just pray that it provides all that for you because that's what it does for me. And so if you have any questions or comments or if you want to shoot me a message, all right, you can do so. And until next time, thanks for visiting. Peace out.